What's up you guys, I'm Dan, this is Frugal Not Cheap. Today we'll look at personal finance software in 2022, why I'm ditching Quicken and what I'm moving to. So first we should talk about what the point of personal finance software is in the first place. <laughs> and that really is uh, just in order to keep track of things, right? So, um, and to, uh, to make things easier by aggregating all the information across your various accounts. So going back, you know, my, my personal uh, history with this kind of software uh, dates back to 2006. Um, at that time I was working as a nonprofit credit counselor and I was helping people put together budgets and, um, you know, work on their financial situation. And at the same time I was seeing that I wasn't really making a whole lot of, lot of headway in my own. So I decided to get my financial act together and uh, I got a piece of software called Microsoft Money. It's a great piece of software. Uh, we can see here an old screenshot from it. And, um, you know, this is, uh, I think the screenshot says June 2, 2008, which is kind of cool because here we are, um, you know, in June of uh, 2022, <laughs> quite some years later. Uh, anyway, I thought it was a wonderful piece of software. You could download transactions from all of your different accounts. They would populate here. It had automatic categorization. Then you'd go in and fix some categories and stuff. Um, but you can see here the basic... Uh, basic dashboard was quite useful. You had a cash flow forecast down here, which would show you, uh, you know, what are your projected balances? Um, am I, do I have enough of a buffer in my checking account to take care of all the upcoming bills that are due? Um, then we have a quick view of our spending by category to see, you know, have we been uh, matching up with our budget so far or not? And then there's this handy dandy spending tracker, um, which you could just put a few categories that you really want to watch, like maybe groceries or restaurants or, you know, whatever it is. Um, now it'd be dating for me, <laughs> like, hey, how much am I spending on that? Anyway, so these, these, um, it had just a really, really helpful uh, dashboard and also really helpful reporting and transactions. So the cash flow we talked about, got the credit center, talked to, you know, give you an idea of what's going on with your credit score. Uh, lifetime planner, very useful in terms of retirement planning and their events. Uh, then, of course, the budget, right? The heart of personal finance software generally, you know, can, to, to be able to put that together and then track your progress against it. It had a debt planner if you were paying down debts, uh, what ifs, other events that you could put in here as well. So it's a wonderful piece of software, but unfortunately, I think in 2009 or somewhere around there, um, they, they stopped um, providing uh, support for it. Meaning that you could still use the software, you could download the Sunset Edition for free for a long time. You might still be able to actually, um, but th there's no support and, um, and it didn't... Um, update all the connections to all the different financial institutions, right, to all the banks. And, you know, losing that, losing the ability to download all the transactions automatically and quickly, you know, that's really a big, big deal for me where I have, you know, accounts with many financial institutions. If you had everything with one, uh, it might be a lot easier. So, you know, that could still be an option for you. Anyway, so with them being discontinued, then, of course, uh, I went over to Quicken, which is the topic of uh, today's uh, discussion. So uh, this is Quicken. Uh, unfortunately, guys, I've, uh, right now at this stage, I don't feel comfortable sharing sort of every detail about my financial life. Uh, so I'm going to be uh, hiding a lot of the, the detail uh, on these screens. And so that's why I won't be moving around uh, them a whole lot. Uh, as we go through. Um, but generally, you know, we can see that it's very similar to uh, what we had with Microsoft Money, uh, where we have on the left, you know, all of our different accounts and the balances, and they're broken out by banking, uh, business, investing, um, any other property and debt, uh, where I can keep track, for instance, the value of my vehicle, Natalia. Uh, so really, really very, uh, very useful. And uh, they've modernized the dashboard a little bit here, so uh, we can kind of see income and expenses, net worth over time. You can see the impact of the <laughs> of the uh, recent declines in the stock market on the portfolio, which is also tracked on this page. Uh, and then my top spending categories as well. Um, and then you know bills, incomes, and transfers, the the scheduled things um, that that uh, kind of recur that you know we'd want to keep an eye on. So that's that's the handy dashboard, and that part is modern. Um, 
And, and a lot of the other screens are kind of more old school and the stuff that we used to see in Microsoft Money. And if we click on the spending tab, then we can take a look at our spending. Here is uh, my spending for the last 12 months. And so of course, this is really, really a helpful piece of the uh, Quicken software. And then we've got bills and income where we can see a, a forecast of uh, what the cash, the, the balances are gonna be like in any of your accounts. I selected my main checking account here. So this is also very useful as well. We can enter in all of our different bills. Um, and then of course we can put in all our incomes and transfers and, and schedule things. Uh, transfers would be things like payments to your credit card because really all you're doing is moving money from one account to another. Um, it's not like a, an actual expenditure. Um, in a sense, you know what I mean? You made the, you did the expenditure at the time that you charged on the card. And here as I click on planning, I would say that really um, what Quicken is, it's a very robust desktop application that can do a ton of great stuff, right? So here we have um, this uh, retirement plan uh, essentially, and you can, you know, put in all these different kinds of assumptions and it's really, really quite useful. As with Microsoft Money, then we also have, you know, this debt reduction uh, planner that we could use if we had debt. We also have the ability to set different savings goals and tie them to an account. We've got an area where we can plan out our taxes. And of course, we've got the budgeting feature. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Then you've got investing, where Quicken is really uh, full featured in terms of being able to track all of your investments by lot, uh, all of the tax consequences to look at your portfolio in different ways. It's got this uh, portfolio x-ray feature from Morningstar uh, that is quite useful. You can look at the performance, the allocations, it's got investing dashboard. And then we've got the property and debt section, which I really think of as the net worth section. So of course, uh, property being your assets and your debt being your liabilities. And then of course, the, uh, the difference between those two being your net worth. So that's really what I think about it here. And it is a useful metric to track over time, uh, definitely. And it's been really cool to have the history going back all the way to 2006, since I took my Microsoft money data, imported it into Quicken, took a lot of work to get it to, um, to work right in Quicken, but eventually I sort of got it there. Anyway, really cool to have the history going back from 2006 all the way to 2022 here in Quicken. So again, lots of really great features, I would say, for Quicken as a, a desktop piece of software. But, you know, now it's 2022, and of course the landscape has changed. And there are some things that, you know, really kind of bother me about Quicken now, and that's why I'm ditching it, and so we'll go there. So we'll go back. Recently I put together a video on um, what I spent in a year living here in Plano, Texas. And I was as I was doing that, I was going through this spending report. But every time that I went to go and customize that report to show only the categories that I wanted to focus on for the last year, like here it's got taxes, obviously I don't want to include taxes in there, that's not a part of my, you know, uh, regular spending, that's just something that, you know, comes off the top. And anytime I made a customization and, and I went back in there to then make a new customization, it would have forgotten all the work that I did and I went to some sort of default setting for the report. And I tried all kinds of different things to make this work, but this really basic feature um, and one of the things that makes Quicken useful uh, was now broken. So that was pretty frustrating. In the end, I just exported all the data and then I used Excel <laughs> and made pivot tables in order to create the video. So you would have noticed that. So that was one frustration, but I was like, eh, you know, I should really give Quicken one more shot before I decide to move away from it. So, you know, I got into Quicken and I decided I'm going to update uh, all of the stuff and make sure that it's really up to date and working. So the two main areas there were going to be to update my budget and make sure that I had a correct budget for the next 12 months. And second um, was to sync everything online and to use the mobile and web feature because it is 2022 and I would like to be able to categorize transactions on the go uh, on the app or on a tablet or you know, in this Chromebook as well. So we gave that a go. And it did not go well at all. When trying to put this budget together, it kept throwing these um, uh, automatic categories that I didn't want in there, these kind of catch-all things and adding these other things. And it was really hard to set the budget for the entire year for a particular category, which it shouldn't be. I mean, just this basic feature that should be really easy to set up and like its most confident thing uh, was just a frustrating nightmare <laughs> that I don't want to deal with. So that was strike one. Strike two was in setting up all this mobile and web stuff. Um, I got it going on the app and I got it going online, 
But when I logged into my investment account online, uh, sorry, when I logged into Quicken online and also on the app, it had different balances for one of my investment accounts between there and the desktop. And, you know, I looked at everything and there's just nothing I could do to make the two line up and it was just driving me nuts. And so that plus the fact that I couldn't use the budget feature, which is, you know, really kind of one of the basic things here with Quicken, that the reporting wasn't saving my customizations and working right. Uh, I just finally threw in the towel. So I would say that uh, Quicken was a great piece of software uh, on desktop, very, very powerful, you know, very feature rich, um, but it's become a buggy mess. It uh, doesn't work with the online syncing. It's a nightmare. You'll see that the reviews for the app are terrible, terrible, terrible. Um, and on top of it all, it's become much more expensive. So one of the things that made me think about this is, of course, um, in the past, I used to be able to buy one copy of Quicken for around $60, and it would last me for the three years that they provided support for it. Well, no more. Now it's $60 a year or so for their subscription, and supposedly this means you get all the latest and greatest features, uh, but in practice it's just been a buggy mess. A lot of times when they uh, push out an update for the software, it screws something up and I have to go back and fix the transaction record, and so, you know, ah. Uh, it's just it just doesn't make sense here in 2022. What you want is a cloud-based piece of software um, where there's only one database. Because <laughs> the the way that Quicken decided to do things in their infinite wisdom uh, was that you'd have your database on your computer. And then their cloud uh, database is a completely separate one. And they would try to sync these two bi-directionally all the time, which of course causes sync issues, right? This is one reason that I don't use uh, OneDrive at my work. We use SharePoint because that way everything's coming from directly from the cloud um, and not, not through the having these two separate copies with your OneDrive, which is just a nonsense implementation. Anyway, so... Yeah, <laughs> threw in the towel and started looking at, all right, what are the um, personal finance software options that are out there now in 22 that I might want to look at? And I looked at some anyway because um, I'd been uh, working uh, with my buddy Sam on his financial plan. All right, so I was out there uh, looking at different options and uh, looking at some videos and stuff. And of course, one option would have been Mint. So Mint is, uh, you know, a very well-known application. It's actually, um, it's owned by Intuit, which was the company that owned Quicken, and then Quicken got spun off into its own thing. Um, but, uh, so Mint is, you know, uh, Quicken basically on the web, but it is much less feature-rich. Um, it's, I, I find the interface to be way too busy. I don't know about you. Um, I just, there's too much going on. Uh, there's, hold on, this is the mobile one, which isn't that bad, but the, here's the, the desktop interface. And yeah, there's just too much going on. Uh, there's ads now, of course, because this ad supported. Um, but the big knock against it for me, anyway, is that it doesn't keep track of your investments well. It'll keep track of the balances, but it does weird things with um, the transfers to your investment accounts and all of the different investment transactions. It's just not really geared towards that. Um, if you're really hyper-focused on your budget, and uh, maybe building an emergency fund or paying down debt, uh, then I think it's a good tool, you know, and it's free, so you can't beat that, right? And they're also really good about maintaining connectivity with all of the different uh, financial institutions. So I think it's a very much a good option out there. Uh, it just wasn't the one for me because, one, um, again, I don't really love the UI. Two, it's not good in investments. Um, and then three, I'm much less focused on being very uh, micromanagey and critical about my budget. I'd rather kind of focus more on um, sort of broader cash flows, and that probably lets you know what my choice ended up being. Uh, but I looked at other options too. So I looked at uh, GNU Cash, GNU Cash. It's a, an open source uh, accounting software um, that I'm actually using for a nonprofit that I'm helping. Uh, they've been using Excel spreadsheets. Um, yeah. So anyway, I, uh, I set them up with um, 
with new cash and it's it's much better uh, it's a lot like a, it's quickbooks but it's free right and it doesn't sync up with your banks automatically they have a protocol to do it but it didn't work for me with my bank maybe it does with the major ones uh, anyway so i just download um, uh, an ofx or a qfx or whatever um, and then import the transactions and it does a really good job of knowing you know what are past transactions what are new matching things up suggesting categories uh, it's really it's a good piece of software and I'm, I'm happy with it but um, it would never work for me because again I wouldn't be able to um, automatically download all the transactions from all these different banks uh, and institutions so that was out uh, cost is good though that's also free so if you've got a small business something to consider uh, the next one I looked at was something called Tiller which is uh, newer <laughs> not that Tiller uh, Tiller personal finance let's look for that so this looked cool, you know, it looked like it had a good dashboard, it's very customizable, um, and the basic idea is it's a plugin that works either with Excel or with Google Sheets. Uh, so I gave it a shot, and you know, it's relatively inexpensive, there is a subscription cost. Um, but to me it was just too clunky. I don't like the idea of using spreadsheets for all of this. Um, transaction data can get damaged, formulas can get broken. It's just, um, it's a fragile way to, to go about doing things. Very flexible, but also fragile. And I just didn't feel good about paying money to, to do that in this, uh, in, yeah, I just, yeah, not for me. So Tiller was out. Um, and then, you know, there's a lot of other ones out there. I'll, I'll talk about one more and then we'll talk about my choice just because there's so many. And maybe at one point, you know, if you'd like, let me know in the comments below. Um, I can do, you know, a more detailed review of uh, any of the different pieces of personal finance software. Uh, but the other big one that I heard about was YNAB. So I thought about that. It's you need a budget. Um, I looked into, you know, the cost, uh, which isn't terrible. It's around a hundred and something dollars a year, I think. Um, again it, it's got a cool concept and the concept is that it, it allocates all the money that you already have uh, rather than the money that you expect to be coming in and and so that way you've already like, in a sense funded um, all of the the things that need to be funded right now right so that concept is pretty cool it's basically building up that buffer that you need in your checking account in order to take care of things and uh, people that really want to get in the weeds and micromanage things, it looks like great software. The reviews from people that really get into it and watch all the tutorials and learn how to use it, they seem to love it. Doesn't look like it's for me. Like, I, again, um, at this stage, um, maybe because, you know, I've been on this personal finance journey now uh, since 2006, as we talked about. Um, and for a lot of that time, I can kind of be an autopilot. It's a little different now because of the move. Uh, but once I've settled in, I can kind of get on autopilot in terms of where my spending is and not getting out of line. And it's not that necessary for me to keep such a close eye on it, especially because uh, younger Dan, again, did a lot of the work in terms of um, stashing away a lot investing very steadily i'm still doing that though um, in order to to meet my future uh personal finance goals so basically even with the market decline um young dan has put us in a really good position and all i need to do is just be on autopilot and keep us uh, on track uh, towards a good position later so kind of the pressure is a little bit off is what i'm saying uh, there's still pressure, but the pressure's off. Uh, so I ended up settling on personal capital. So you might have thought about that because their, their kind of thing is more cash flow management. They're not into like doing a detailed, um, categorized budget. Uh, they're really into investments. Um, and then of course you heard me balking at the subscription costs. Well, personal capital is completely free. Uh, there is a catch, of course, and that catch is that uh, they make their money by selling financial services. Um, they're portfolio managers or wealth advisors or what have you. So they want you to put assets with them and they want you to, um, uh, then of course they take it, they take a fee for that, right? Um, that's not something I'm interested in. As you know very much, I'm a DIY investor and uh, I'm also a person that doesn't have any trouble saying no. So you, you do have to give them a phone number when you sign up. Uh, they will contact you. And uh, I just told them, hey, you know, I love the software. It's really wonderful. Um, but I'm a DIY investor and I, I'm very happy with the way things are going. I don't need your services. Thank you. And that was the end of that. The guy was really great. He wasn't pushy. Um, it was a great conversation and I haven't heard from him since. So, I, you know, I did have them way back in the day. I uh, recently got them, um, got them back. Uh, or I got my, uh, a new account set up uh, more recently as I decided to ditch Quicken.
Here's the uh, the dashboard. Immediately you can see it's very similar to the other pieces of software that we looked at. You've got all your accounts on the left. Um, I've, I've had to black it out so you can't really see, but there's actually, they, they have handy area charts uh, of the balances for each of the subcategories. So of your cash, your investment, your credit, so if we scroll down, then we can also see um, all of the uh, the credit cards and any other assets. Here I'm keeping track of my car. Uh, you could add your home and track as the estimate, um, all kinds of things. And on the dashboard, you've got all of the things that you might want to see. Uh, you've got your net worth over time. You can see the history just kind of recently started. And of course, it has been on the decline. The market has been a little difficult. Um, and then we've got our budgeting. And they've got a unique approach to budgeting. So again, it's much more focused on the macro picture, uh, which I like at this stage. And so depending on your personality and where you are, that might make more sense for you too. Uh, basically, the budget line, the spending line is a circle uh, representing the month. So it starts at noon and that's um, you know the beginning of the month and then the end of the month is a full circle. And you can see I've already overspent for the month. Um, I've spent over three grand this month. Um, and that's because we had a lot of insurance expenses that were due. Uh, so I paid for my auto, renters, and I think umbrella, or at least two of those three anyway. And so that was 800, yeah, $805. So that was a little bit uh, extra and that put us over. Uh, but generally I'm targeting spending of $2,850. Um, and so, yeah, we're over that. Um, then you can see there it has the um, number 22, of course. I'm filming this on June 22nd. And you can see, um, you know, that's where I should be in theory is the spending would be up to that point or less. Um, and then you can see where we were uh, last month. The yellow line is uh, where we were last month. You can see where we were at this point in the dark yellow. And then the remaining shaded yellow portion shows kind of where we ended up at the end of the month because I didn't spend, um, you know, the full, full amount last month. Uh, and it doesn't carry over month to month or anything like that, which is fine. It doesn't, it doesn't have to to me. Um, and then we have on the cash flow side, uh, you can see, you know, uh, where the income is this month versus the expenses and how that compares to last month as well. And if we scroll down, then we can take a look at, you know, our portfolio balances uh, over time. Of course, that reflects very much my net worth since, yeah, I don't have a lot of cash. Uh, and those, the, the cash would be relatively static anyway. Um, and then it's got your retirement savings goals and, you know, how much uh, you, it thinks you've saved um, to now uh, against your, your goal. And, um, you know, on mine, uh, there is an issue. I've got a Vanguard 401k. Uh, it doesn't track any transactions in the 401k. So it's got no idea about how much I'm putting away there. Uh, but, you know, that's happening. So my goal this year is to uh, save around 50k if I can. Um, it thinks I've saved around 5,000 in the few months of data that it has. Um, but it's missing, again, all my 401k contributions. And it's also missing all the data for um, before I signed up for personal capital or before it was able to pull historical data data from anyway. Um, and then it's got an emergency fund. It says kind of where I should be uh, with it. You can see that um, I'm below. Uh, I had some cash flow tightness related to um, uh, my rent and using the credit cards for uh, sign up bonuses. And so I had to um, move some cash over in order to create a sufficient buffer. And then over the coming weeks, I'm going to be able to move that back uh, into my, uh, my savings account. Anyway, so that's the dashboard. I think uh, it really is quite useful. Um, let me show you some of the um, other components of personal capital. So of course the big one here is uh, your transactions. So this pulls all the transactions from everywhere in one place and then you can categorize them so that you can keep an eye on those spending categories. Um, even though, you know, again, we're not looking at uh, where are we for the budget line for each category individually. Um, it is useful still though to be able to review uh, how the spending is going there. On the app, uh, you can of course uh, quickly categorize transactions and quickly get a glance at things. And quickly I'll say this is not sponsored, right? None, none of my stuff is sponsored. Um, but you know, there is a referral link in the description in case, um, you know, you want to use it and you're curious about the software. Uh, I like it. Um, but if you do, again, be prepared to, uh, to tell them no when they call you, uh, to try to offer you their services, right? All right. So then we have the cash flow section. It's not uh, quite as good as Quicken and um, uh, Pers M Microsoft Money were in that it doesn't show you where the balance of your account is going to be. It doesn't do balance forecasting, but it does show you what cash flows have been like this month, what they were last month, month, and so they they can give you an idea of that. So as long as you're not in danger of you know running out of funds in an account, um, then this is still very useful. And that's why I keep personally um, a buffer of about one month's worth of expenses in my checking account. 
It does have a bills section. Um, there's not a whole lot for it to, uh, to catch uh, for me, um, but you know, it could be helpful for your situation maybe. And then we have the budgeting section, which again is really useful. Um, the circle things are from you know the, the dashboard that we saw on the homepage, uh, but it does have the spending broken down by categories here, um, as we can see. And it is helpful that if you toggle the time uh, range from this month to one year, then it also toggles the budget amount. So we had previously our budget for the month of, you know, I think it was 2850. Um, now we're looking at my overall annual budget of just around 34,000. So again, there's been a little life, lifestyle inflation, but you can see I'm still well off of the uh, roughly 40,000 to almost $40,000 that I spent uh, in the 12 months through the end of May. Oof, but we had a lot of one-time expenses and medical stuff going on that, you know, knock on wood isn't going to recur. So yeah, I think this is really great and really just the right level of detail needed. On the investing side here, you can see the different menu items. Uh, you can look at your holdings, you can look at your balances over time, uh, you can see the performance and compare that against benchmarks. But I think the most useful part of this um, is the fact that it does look at your portfolio holistically. So a lot of people I've noticed try to play little mental accounting games where their 401k has a certain asset allocation and uh, it might be you know more or less conservative than their brokerage account, uh, which has a different asset allocation. And they talk about how, oh, my, my 401k is this, my brokerage is that, blah, blah, blah. it's just one portfolio, right? So, like, you know, no matter how we want to slice and dice it in our minds, uh, in the end, um, we've just got one portfolio and in aggregate it has just one asset allocation. So, you know, yeah. Let's not fool ourselves is what I'm saying. And so this does give you a very quick view of your overall asset allocation, uh, which we can see here. So really useful. And then of course it also has a, uh, a tab for US sectors. So here we can see um, you know, the US sector breakdown as well, which could be cool if you're interested in sort of sector weights and all that kind of stuff. I can't be bothered. I just do you know, your broader index funds. Uh, then we have planning tools. And I don't want this video to get too, too long, um, but I do want to quickly highlight they do have that savings plan Planner, like uh, like in Microsoft Money and Quicken. Um, it's got a cool retirement fee analyzer. You can see that my fees are extremely low against the benchmark. And if you added on the fees from personal capital, then you know, you'd see a lot more loss to fees. So yeah, anyway. And they also have a cool investment checkup tool, uh, which basically says, you know, are you on the efficient uh, frontier? Is your international allocation too big or too small by their standards? I kind of don't necessarily agree with all of their analysis there, but um, you know, I think it is a useful tool uh, anyway for someone to get a look at. But of course the most useful tool for me is their retirement planner. So um, this is this is I think quite a good tool. It gives you a percentage chance of success. Uh, you can add all kinds of uh, different things to it. So uh, you can add in new uh, types of income uh, along the road or whenever. So you might say you're going to work some during retirement. Uh, you might expect some pension income. Some of you might have that. I don't. Um, you might expect to uh, sell a property and downsize at some point. So you can model all of that here in your retirement plan. And then on the expense side, you can also model a bunch of really cool stuff here. Um, you could model uh, charitable giving, uh, supporting dependents, um, getting a new vehicle, at some point your vehicle might need to be replaced, uh, a wedding for one of your children, um, or you might upgrade your home, right? Or healthcare expenses, or education, college for your kids. So all this stuff can be built into uh, the plan, and so I think that's a really great feature in personal capital. They do upsell you a little bit. The smart withdrawal thing is not something that's available to us for free. That's only available to uh, uh, people with the um, uh, that have their wealth advisory services, uh, but not a big deal. I think really um, you can even make you know additional scenarios and plans. Um, so yeah, all of these tools that are available here on the web and then also on the app, um, I, I really think are quite great. And of course, one fear you might have with something like this that's offered for free is you know, hey, is it going to be around forever, right? And, um, you know, hopefully it'll be around for a long time. Um, it has been already around for a long time. I think, I don't know, it's, it's many years since I first signed up with them. Um, I kind of wish I'd never um, deleted that account because then I would have the history from back then. Well, then they'd just it'd have the history and then the giant gap when I wasn't using it and then again. Um, so, eh, whatever. It's okay. Um, in the end, I think one of the lessons I've learned in this whole thing from moving away from Quicken is that the historical data doesn't really matter all that much. Of course, my cost basis on my brokerage account, very important to keep. So I've downloaded that from Vanguard directly. 
So I have a copy of that, uh, but outside of that, eh, it doesn't really matter how much you spent on, I don't know, bubble gum in 1997, right? Like, it's okay. I had a lot of sort of sentimental value kind of locked up in that uh, and not letting go of Quicken for that reason, but I've come to see, yeah, not a big deal. It's fine. As long as, you know, things are well now and moving forward, there's not that much reason to uh, to look backward and unhappy right now with personal capital. Uh, they do have a couple billion dollars under management, by the way, so their business is doing okay. Uh, and on top of that, they were recently bought by uh, this Empower, which I understand, you know, uh, is a larger company, of course, since they bought them, but offers other services. And so there's additional capital kind of behind the business. And so far, I haven't seen them mess with anything here uh, in terms of the UI. So hopefully, you know, the new owners aren't going to meddle too much, or if they do, um, there will be actually improvements. I hope there will be improvements to personal capital. Um, but yeah, I'm very happy. Um, you know, if you, you check it out, let me know what you think. If you have other personal finance options that uh, you think people should know about, uh, do let us know in the comments below. Yeah, if you, if you did like the video, uh, please hit the like button. Also consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.